and I didn't always, I wasn't always with you, brother. You were absolutely right. There is no doubt. I don't know of another man on the planet that could deal with all of this and right. still mm -hmm. keep that that fighter fight and uh, and and be willing to do what he's doing. Yeah, and Pastor Rank, I get you to comment on on all of this that's going sure. on with the trial. Go ahead. Well, I think, first of all, it's America. We, the people that are on trial, President Trump just represents us who are recognizing that we are quickly losing our freedom and that America is under assault, whether it be open borders, whether it be those that are insurgents coming across the border. And so really it represents we, the American people, on trial. So here's the thing. This is a rigged uh, prosecution, rigged judge. The real criminals are this prosecution as well as the judge. But God God has been speaking and declaring that President Trump would have to go through this. And uh, and I've been showing the feathers, Pastor Gene, which I have here, because again, what's the outcome? It doesn't look like it, but God said from the start that every one of these indictments and trials, like feathers, are going to begin to fall one by one, and they're not going to have any weight to them. Lastly, I want to say this. What do we do as the American people? What do we do as the church? Acts 12 is a great example of the power of the the church, a praying people, they prayed without ceasing, and guess what God did? He intervened through angelic intervention, busted the gates wide open, and set, uh, you know, the uh, Peter free. And I think the same thing's going to happen with President Trump. We just got to keep praying, and we and President Trump, this country is going to be set free as well as him, and we're going to be on course for something that's going to reset our country to greatness again. Let me show you what uh, President Trump posted out on Truth Social. Highly conflicted, to put it mildly, Judge Juan Mershon has taken away my constitutional right to free speech. Everybody's allowed to talk and lie about me, but I'm not allowed to defend myself. This is a kangaroo court, and the judge should recuse himself. Uh, you know. Well, first of all, I should probably try to do my radio voice. We got Eric and uh, Rick Green. They both have perfect radio voices. But anyway, here's the real deal. You know, when it comes to, I like what what that uh, Bill Maher said. He said, listen, it's the job of adults to protect the children. That's a no-brainer. But here's really what we've been talking about. President Trump, injustice, we the people on trial, injustice. What are we going to do about it? Now, here's the, here's the thing we have to remember. You start messing with the children, yeah. according to Jesus, and it would be better for a millstone to be tied around your neck than to cause one of the little ones to stumble. And this is going to bring God on the scene, and it already is bringing God on the scene. And it's also causing people to wake up because they're seeing the blatant efforts that people are going out of their way to try to sexually exploit and destroy our children. And it's all going to begin to backfire. It already is happening because God himself is getting involved. And you watch. It's because a generation of children are going to rise up, and they're going to worship the Lord, and they're going to be part of the future of making this country great again. Uh, you're so right, and I believe this is the, the key to the older generation. We're wanting to see revival and awakening. Well, guess what? It's going to happen with the youth. So, Dutch, don't let me forget. I want to get you to talk about that. You just need to come home. Please, Pastor Hank, help us. Mm -hmm. Well, it used to be where you would send your kid to be educated. Now they're being indoctrinated, and they're being indoctrinated on purpose to say things like death to America. And that's an outrage, and that's what Jesus said is lawlessness, and it's why law enforcement needs to get involved, including even the National Guard, if it needs to get to that level, to restore order. These are not peaceful protests. This is chaos. It's lawlessness. And But those of you that are watching, you're going, man, this whole show, you know, President Trump, the kids here with the Furies. We have flurries, by the way, in Nebraska. Uh, not Furies yet. But anyway... You know, it looks like a lot of bad news. I've learned something in 40 years of serving God. God is usually never on time. Not when we always want him to move. God's always last minute, it seems. And he is intervening. And there is a plan of redemptive hope for America. And that's what redemptive plan is, God's help and God's hope. Pastor Gene, if I may, and I'll go very quickly, I promise. As you're looking at the universities, you might be going, what in the world does all this mean? Can I just share briefly, very quickly, a couple prophecies that I found on my phone uh, 2018. Can I just do it very quickly? I'll go quick for the sake of time. Uh, 
God talked about 2018. He says, what, watch what will take place in your schools, America. I will put it back, says the Lord. There will be a movement that will take place among the college campuses that will bring about a put it back as they push back. Then God said this one. This one's very powerful. In uh, 2005, he says, watch what I do, God says, to visit the universities. I did it in the 60s. I will do it again in in this generation, and I'll begin to turn the universities upside down. Last, last, very brief one. This is 2020. God says, "I'll take over the universities who have taught things that have been contrary to the word of truth, and I'll begin to invade the schools." It may not look like it, and the reason why you're seeing these lawless protests is because the enemy only attacks what he's afraid of, and he's afraid of what God has been saying. There is coming a generation that will arise, according to Psalm 24, that. Will will seek his face, and I believe it'll be on those college campuses and across the schools of our great it nation. It absolutely will be. I'm going to get to Dutch, and he's going to talk about that in just a moment. But let me show you this. Noah Pollock, uh, post-conservatives have been warning for 50 years that universities were being taken over by Marxists, and now they're literally <laughs> announcing through bullhorns on the quad that the university has been taken over by Marxists. Really? Watch. Pledge to do whatever you can to not work not go to class, not do research, or otherwise the functioning of this despicable place until they meet our demand. You all are incredibly smart people who are so knowledgeable about things like post-colonialism and Marxism and other theories. It is time for you to get out of your libraries and labs and put your theories into action and stand yeah. with them. Put your theories into action. All right, well, we know what the end result of that is. But Dutch, you know, you can't help but think back 1968. Uh, we can think about 1965. You know, what was going on in America during those years? You know, what was birthed was the great Jesus revolution, the revival that everybody likes to look back at when they're making movies about. This is what we need to be ready to handle. The church has got to be re ready to handle the influx of people that may not look like they may be furries coming to your church, Pastor Hank. What are you going to do? You know, we, we, we've got to be able to, to handle, or they could be furries in the flurries anyway. But listen, I, honestly, Dutch, talk about this. You shared something w with me when we were in uh, Phoenix, Arizona at a conference, and I heard you talk about the young people coming back, and you had a vision. I don't know how much you want to share about that, but I want you to speak to that because we are looking at the greatest harvest of souls ever coming, and they're right here right now. Speak to it. Yeah, you know, I've had, the Lord has spoken to me several times over the last 20, 25 years about this. And I've only had two open visions where God just, while I was speaking, just took over and with my eyes open, I was seeing not the room, but a spiritual scene. They have both been pictures of what is coming in this revival with young people to the campuses, um, at every level, high schools, you know, middle schools, college campuses, and in both vis both of these, these campuses and these schools were on fire with revival. And I, I know we're seeing other fire we're not happy with. But, you know, it's not that God waits and waits and waits and then finally gets around to it. Someone said it earlier, there's a level of desperation that finally comes that causes a ripeness to the harvest. And we're coming to that now. That's what this is producing. God is orchestrating events. And we're about to see this fire of revival come. And when it came, Gene, it was unstoppable. Right. Kids were being saved by the thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, signs, right. wonders, deliverances. It w and people tried to stop it. Administrators tried to stop it. Uh, teachers tried to stop it. Uh, demons tried to stop it. It could not be stopped. This is what we are now coming into. Right. And I tell you, we're going to see it. God is coming to rescue a generation. He said to me once, I am going to rescue this generation. I am coming to them to set them free. And it's going to happen. Amen. It is going to happen. I want to put up a prayer line right now. I didn't, the guys didn't know I was going to do this. Uh, and you need somebody, you, maybe you've got a, a child, a kid, 
a Marxist in the uh, that's professing crazy stuff there at university. You need somebody to pray with you, call the number. It's right there on your screen and, and someone will be there. A licensed prayer minister is there waiting to take your call. They'll pray with you and agree with you. Uh, but I want to go to Eric. Eric, you're, uh, <clears throat> you know, you, with your new program, Stackelbeck Tonight, you're on every night and you're, you're talking about what's happening in America and in the world. But in, in light of all of that, it's real easy. I know you have to deal with the same thing I do. It's like, if you're not careful, this stuff can get in get inside you and you start going, well, dear Lord, what's next? What could they possibly do next? How do you stay in front of it? Yeah, uh, I think number one, uh, it, we're all kind of news junkies, I'm sure. We follow what's going on. But I think in terms of, and talking to people on the ground around the world and getting that inside scoop, so to speak, Gene, and talking to great people like our guest tonight, because that's the key point. I think to stay in front of it and to stay sane, it almost sounds simplistic, but it is the core truth. You got to get in the word of God. Amen. And we need to be, number one, in the word, and number two, pray without ceasing and be prayer warriors. Prayer works, as everyone on this panel knows very well, Without that, we would be despondent. We'd all be hiding under our tables right now without the Lord and without that knowledge of knowing, hey, God is on the throne. And Dutch has said it, Pastor Hank, sometimes he, at the last minute, man, his timing is always perfect. He always comes through. So it's a very difficult time if you're an atheist. No doubt, I will say that. It's a difficult time for everyone, but the key difference for us as believers is, look, we've got the anchor. We've built our lives on the rock, and his name is Jesus, Amen. and he's the only way through the storm right now. So, Gene, that gets me through. I talk about the three Fs, faith, family, and freedom. Cling to all that's good and true that's in these right. dark times and know that revival's on the way. I, I agree with Pastor Dutch and what everyone's saying. We're at that moment where— enough is enough and a line has been drawn in the sand and i look at what's happening you made a great point gene hey parents be parents fathers be fathers that's really kind of the symptoms we see on these college campuses a lot of it is all of it really is due to a lack of leadership in the home uh at universities in the governmental level even the the, the mayor of new york City. Hey, why is the NYPD not being allowed to really go in and lock these kids up to greater degrees? The footage I saw last night, Gene, of these kids essentially spitting in the faces of New York City police officers was just disgusting. It is. And they have to hold, hold their peace, so to speak. So leadership is sorely needed, but biblical-based leadership. We need some Josiahs at yeah. every level of government, in the universities, in the homes, and beyond. I absolutely agree with that. Well, let me give you some good news because here, here is what you're seeing uh, is a tale of two states. Let's look at New York and Florida. And let me show you what's happening. Look at this Charles Weber post. In New York, the Jewish population is approximately 1.7 million. But in Florida, it's 670,000, almost half. Florida Jews are hosting the largest Passover Seder at the University of Florida. Did you get that? And in New York, Jews are attending school remotely for safety concerns. Leadership matters. Look at that. Look at the Seder meal set up there at the University of Florida. This is, this is, when we talk about leadership, like Eric just, you know, brought back, this is why I did. I, I saw a statistic that my wife showed me, and, and I wish I had the video. If, if a father goes to church, if he leads and he takes his children to church, there, it's over 90% probability they will stay there. If it's just mom, it's like 17%. There's a huge lack of leadership in the church when it comes to men. Now, all of you guys, we speak in churches, we speak all around the country, and every place I go to, you see an overwhelmingly larger majority of women versus men in the church. So Dutch men have a place, and I, I believe we're going to see a revival, an awakening of men like we've never seen before that are going to stand up and go, wait a minute, this is my time to take my place, my God-given place of authority and leadership, not just lead my family, but maybe lead my neighborhood, my community, my church, whatever it takes, our cities, and see God move and stand up for righteousness. Your thoughts? 
I, I know uh, the pastors, leaders who are hearing this, God is already moving on them. He started with one brother with a dream, uh, and it's all about challenging the men to rise up. It is time for that. And, and I believe there will be another men's movement that awakens the heart of Father God in men, in fathers. And when that happens, it's a game changer. It is an absolute game changer. And that's what's been missing. And so I, I believe that's going to happen. And I believe it, it is already beginning. It is something I'm glad is coming up, that is that it's coming up on this program tonight because I think we need to talk about it a little more. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing the Lord as we're doing this program, challenging me to do some posts and begin to talk about this and pray into what he is uh, beginning to do with men. So I think it's right and I think it's coming. Yeah, amen. All right, Pastor Hank, I wanna give you a chance to comment before I move on. Go ahead. Sure. Well, I think what's important first and foremost is leadership matters. We know that in Judges 13 for 40 years, they were under captivity and God raised up a deliverer named Samson. The problem was the people turned their very own deliverer that God raised up over to the enemy. We cannot miss who God has anointed. It's Donald Trump for this time. And he's part of the delivering plan that God's going to use. Secondly and lastly, Acts 3, the first recorded miracle after the day of Pentecost was a lame man walking. It's time for us men to rise up. It's time for pastors to rise up. We have to do Nehemiah chapter 2. Survey the walls. They're a mess. America's a mess. But Nehemiah realized it's time to rise and build. That's decision and action. And if we do it, you watch the acceleration of God's hand of justice for this country. Yeah, amen. All right, Rick, I know you got a comment. Go ahead. Well, I just got to say, guys, that contrast you just showed, Gene, of, uh, of Florida and New York, the same.